Thanks so much. We're excited to be here tonight. My name is Lee Pipkin. I'm the executive director for the food bank. And I've been in the food industry or the hunger industry rather for about 20 years now. And uh, so I'm excited about what we do and how we do it. I just kind of want to give you an overview of what the food bank is and, and what we're doing. Um, we, Pre-COVID numbers, we ran about two, 2.5 million pounds of food through our food bank here over on Hill Street. Since COVID, we've been up over three and a half million pounds every year, and it's not going to stop from what we're seeing. Uh, our anticipated uh, distribution is, is that plus some for uh, the remainder of this year and uh, next year. It's, it's going to continue to be tough. There's no doubt. Uh, whether it's COVID related or uh, economically related, uh, folks are having a tough time out there. And you guys are seeing that, and David's seeing that with his group, um, Rust Street Ministries, it's, it's one of our top agencies. We couldn't do it without what y'all are doing, and we appreciate everything there. Uh, we cover about 13 counties, so we're out there in the Concho Valley, so to speak, uh, and we, we work with about 116 different agencies. The majority of them are faith-based, and we're proud to say that, without a doubt. But we do work with a lot of uh, uh, agencies that distribute food to individuals, uh, soup kitchens that will prepare food uh, for folks that are out there. And so it, it never fails that there's some way that we can help and assist out there. And uh, these two folks that are fine folks that are going to speak to you tonight are fairly new to our staff. We're excited to have them on board. And they're both in charge of a couple of our agency programs that uh, we think are just stellar. And uh, we're going to continue to do some great things with them. So appreciate the opportunity to be with you all tonight. And, uh, you know, hey, give us a question. We'll get it answered. <laughs> Thank you all. Hello, how's everybody doing tonight? So I'm not that used to speaking to a microphone. So, <laughs> uh, My name is Jacob Folsom. Uh, I work at the Concha Valley Regional Food Bank. I've been working with the food bank since February this year. Um, before that, I, was, I did human resource for a company. I worked in banking. But um, I used to work at the banks before, and they used to tell me, you know, worry, only worry about accounts. Don't worry about, you know, how the person's set up and certain things like that. And so I used to spend all my time focusing on getting people set up with the right accounts and everything. I would, I would get in trouble for that because I was wasting too much time trying to help people. So I found the right job for me. So now, now I'm here help, working at the Contra Valley Food Bank. And this is Claire right here. Um, like Jacob said, they, we just are gifted to be able to uh, have this position with the, with the food bank. We are both blessed and we are excited to come every day. And we've driven our staff crazy because we've been so excited to come talk to you all tonight. So they're like, we're glad it's finally here. We're tired of listening to you too. So okay, I'll let you... Oh, we ready? All right. Yeah, go ahead and get started. You know, I want to start this off that my dad's favorite saying is, they can't make it tough enough for us. And with with God at the helm, they can't make it tough enough. So we're, we're ready to go. Um, first of all, let me give you, um, Lee did a great job of starting out with some statistics. Um, I'll break it down even further. One in five children face food insecurity. Um, which is really a huge number. And in Tom Green County, 5,260 children uh, face hunger. In Texas, over a million children face food insecurity, which is way too high. And 38 million children in our country are food insecure. So we definitely have our work cut out for us. Okay, then we have what is food insecurity. Food insecurity is a term that's very well known in the food banking world, but not a lot of people tend to know what it actually means. So the definition of food insecurity, 
Food insecurity refers to a lack of access at times to enough food for an active, healthy life for all family members with limited or uncertain availability of nutritional foods. So it doesn't just include, you know, being hungry and not having anything, but also not having anything that's nutritional for you. So that's what, uh, what we've been trying to focus on with the food bank right now. We've been trying to get work on getting more nutritional foods for the community and everything because um, it's okay, you know, to eat a lot, but um, it's, well, it's not okay to eat a lot, but it's okay to, to not be able to have what you need, but it's even worse to have what you need, but not have the right foods that you're eating, too. And so, um, households, um, food insecure children are those living in households experiencing food insecurity. Um, a lot of the times what we've been noticing is a lot of families are uh, being forced to make a trade-off with, um, with food, uh, purchasing food. So sometimes you have to sit there and think, am I gonna you know, uh, buy food for my fridge or you, am I gonna put gas in my car nowadays? Am I gonna go grocery shop? Well, that is food. But or am I gonna get my car repaired? Am I gonna pay my electric bill? Or am I gonna have enough for groceries? So now a lot of families are tending to have to make that decision. Uh, one thing we've been noticing a lot lately is people uh, that are coming to, uh, to our agencies and everything that haven't ever had uh, to need any assistance before in their life. And so, you know, they're coming there talking to our social workers and everything like that. And so, yeah, it's been the number of people that are in need is increasing by the day. Let's see. Okay. And this one is the right Perfect. there. Perfect. Um, what exactly is a food bank? Um, it, it is a little confusing. When I first started, um, I started the school pantries up in Montana, and they said, well, just go to the food bank and shop. And I thought, I, I had no idea. So uh, a food bank is an organization that collects, stores, and distributes food from the food industry, um, different retailers, HEB, Walmart, um, donated food items, when they always say, bring a can of food, um, that is, is a great asset to us. And it distributes millions of pounds of food yearly. Last year, Concho Valley uh, Food Bank distributed um, 1.7 meals to our counties. But what was your, you had the... 3.3, so we're up there and growing, and like I always say, and then entered COVID. So it really uh, impacted actually the whole world. So in general, food banks make it easy for agencies to obtain food, and then they distribute it at a much lesser cost to its clients. So it's, it's such a valuable link. Oh, actually. Yeah. Take that right back. <laughs> so how did food banks begin? Uh, food banks were created and developed um, by John Van Hengel in Phoenix, Arizona. And Mr. Van Hengel was a volunteer at a local food kitchen. He was um, at a soup kitchen. And he noticed the same woman kept rummaging through um, the receptacle outside of a grocery store. So he finally went out and uh, visited with her. And she said, you know what we need? We need a place that's going to take this food and store it. Because many times, purely edible food is being thrown away. And um, so taking action, um, action met the streets and St. Mary's Food Bank um, was the first food bank created in Phoenix, Arizona um, by Mr. Van Hengel. And um, as all of you know, it's many of us just hearing, hearing about a problem and going solution and going into action. So. <laughs> So our focus at the Concho Valley Regional Food Bank, our focus is to fight hunger in the Concho Valley. So um, a lot of people think we're just over Tom Green County. Well, we're actually over 13 counties. Um, I'm kind of not too familiar with this part of Texas, but I assume that it's, uh, the Concho Valley is only those 13 counties. It might include a, a couple more, but we cover the 13 counties here. Um, our food bank, like she said, is not a pantry. A lot of times, a uh, misconception people have, like she said, is when people come, they think, you know, they just come to the food bank and shop and get what you need and everything. Now, that's, you know, a great idea and stuff, but 
thing is we distribute to the pantry. So let's say a family comes in here. Of course, we know we're not going to turn them away or anything like that. We keep stuff, you know, for people that walk up. But we do prefer, you know, people to go to the pantries. One, um, because um, a lot of times uh, the people are walking, they're, they don't have transportation and stuff like that. And so we try to have pantries all over the all over the city, you know, and everything. Also in all of our outer counties right now. And um, the numbers have been increasing by the day almost. Let's see which one this is. Oh yeah. So um, so the uh, biggest question is how are, how do we distribute our food? So main re main thing you've probably seen um, in the community, seen us out and about, um, we par uh, is food distributions and food pantries. Um, we partner with over 90 agencies to, uh, who provide food pantries. Um, they have feeding sites, so you could get a hot, hot meal, or you could get groceries for your home at one of these pantries. Um, 90, 90 uh, agencies within the 13 counties. Um, we also do the food distributions. Um, we also have one coming up this December 10th, so I'd like to see everybody there. But yes, so we have um, the food distributions right there. So the community, uh, we get volunteers and everything. We just distribute foods um, to the community. The big, the best thing about that I've noticed with the food distributions is there's not a lot, um, a lot of qualifications for somebody to receive food. You know, so it's just a couple, couple simple information. You get what you need, and then everybody just goes through the line. Um, I don't know if anybody went to the one at the Coliseum that happened recently, but it was a really big turnout. Um, another program that we've been working on, this one, I think it's only a couple months old, maybe about two or three months. Um, it's called our veggie van right here. So um, we have a picture of my friend Neil right here. He, uh, he does the veggie van. So what he does is all of our excess produce um, that we have throughout the day and stuff, you know, he, he rummages through it and finds the best thing and he takes it to our outer counties. Because a lot of times with these outer counties, you know, they don't, uh, well, from what I've noticed, they don't tend to have like a grocery store, a Walmart or something like that to get fresh produce. So Neil goes to all the counties every day, not all the counties every day, but throughout the week he goes to different counties and he delivers produce. So um, sometimes if you're in a different county and see one of our pantries, there's a high chance you'll run into Neil there. And then we also have our social services program, uh, team right there. It's Andrea and Cassandra. They, um, they're our social workers. So um, let's say, um, you know, nowadays everything's online and people have a lot of trouble um, filling out forms online, I know I do, you know, when it comes to auto pay and everything else. So the social service team, what they do is they help people that are having trouble applying for stuff like SNAP, Medicaid, food stamps, stuff like that. Um, people, they come in there and help you get signed up, help you check on your status and all that kind of information. And another thing that they do is Let's say, you know, there's a family that's in need with diapers, toiletries, stuff like that. Um, through our social services team, the um, social workers, after, you know, they get done helping the families, they'll give them, uh, we have a pantry where we keep diapers and wipes and uh, just any, you know, toiletry products that any, anybody would need. Oh, and here's Claire's program right here. <laughs> Oh, this is the program that's so near and dear to my heart. Um, this is called the Food to Kids Backpack Program. And basically, it's a program that provides kids food for the weekends. Um, when I was working on the school side of things, I would have children come up to me and say, Miss Claire, can I go home with you? And I say, why? Why do you want to come home with me? I'm not, I'm not as much fun as, you know, as your house. And they said, but we need food. And I, I was very shocked uh, when that answer came out. So we started looking into it. And in fact, um, a lot of families, it is hard. Kids receive food. They receive breakfast and lunch at school and snacks. Um, but they don't have that on the weekends. So this program has been phenomenal. Um, basically, they receive a bag of food discreetly put in their backpacks um, by their teachers, and it is completely volunteer run. So um, to date, we fill about 1,045 sacks um, just for our schools and outer counties um, uh, a week. So it's a program that is large and getting larger. Um, but again, just um, it's, it just fits the bill. The simple qualifications for the backpack program are basically if a student would tell a teacher or a counselor, 
I'm hungry. And they'll say, are you hungry now or are you hungry at home? And many of them are very open about it and say, I'm, I'm hungry when I go home. So that's a telltale sign. Uh, another sign is you'll notice kids um, stuffing food in their pockets or putting it in their lockers or their backpacks. And um, a lot of kiddos I've seen, they'll take it home and share it with their siblings too. So um, it's, it's real. And uh, the other way is through um, a parent or a caregiver calling the counselor or the teacher saying, I, I just need to give you a heads up. We've got some changes happening at home or the child has been removed and was, is with a different caregiver and we're really struggling to make ends meet. We didn't know this was gonna happen. Um, so we work very closely with the counselors in the schools. And I try to keep the program very fluid. Um, they'll say, oh, I'm so sorry, I didn't, I need to up the numbers for our school. And they, but they just found out, I said, listen, it, we'll, we'll take care of you. Whatever, whatever it is, we'll take care of you. So um, volunteers come in and make the, um, the sacks, they, they provide all of that. And then we have a, another set of volunteers that come and pick up these heavy crates. So just because um, we're so visual, um, it's called the backpack program because just for confidentiality's sake, a lot of kids, um, they'll get their service hours, they'll come and they'll say, okay, room 1B needs four sacks. Yeah. So the teacher will leave like a basket outside her door, and then when they're testing or, or doing something, she'll go to the lockers of the, of the kiddos that, that need the backpacks. So she just slips it right into their backpack. It's um, light enough that the kids get it home handily. And to blow our confidentiality, um, we just had a bus driver come to us and they said, oh, it was so cute. The kids were so hungry, which they are when they got off of school. She sat down in the bus and all the kids were like, can I have that? <laughs> so, so we don't we get, it's so refreshing. The simplicity of children is so refreshing. But um, just to give you an idea, it, it's fantastic. Like I, this is my kind of meeting. So we try to give them enough food for both days of the weekend. So this one has SkettiOs and um, pork and beans. This is this week's. So hot off the press here. And then we have um, two cereals for them. And all of this is shelf stable. The cans, you can just pop it open. So it's really easy for them to get into. Animal crackers, have to have animal crackers. Um, we have two shelf stable milks and it's good it's good milk too and then we have the, the fruit leathers which is everybody's favorite that would be my first choice on the bus but it's not very filling <laughs> and then we have two juices and we have four peanut butters four jellies again super easy to get into they just they just can tear it off and last but not least, peanut butter crackers. <laughs> so it's really, it's a, it's a great um, variety of food. Each week they get a new um, menu, if you will. So we change it up a little bit for them. And in fact, we're just looking at some other items. We just got samples, mm -hmm. um, but I've ordered them. I haven't shared them out yet, so I'm excited to share them with the office. And, and so usually if we like them, the kids like them. So once we get all of that done, um, and like I said, we fill 1,045 bags each week, so we're busy. It's a completely out of trouble. Then we put 80 bags to a crate, and the crate um, then just is delivered to the school. And like, um, we have anywhere from one school picked up today, um, 12 crates and then some bags left over, some are three, some are. So it's a fantastic program. And um, just to break a little bit on our volunteers, um, we have volunteers from churches, uh, Junior League, they're fantastic. They leave work, some of them, to come pick up the crate, go drop it off at the school, empty it out, and then bring it back. And um, I have a volunteer, um, our Otilia, she oh, came back and she said, now listen here, she said, I, I, she said, I'm 70, but I can do more than sit at that desk. <laughs> and I said, well, if you'd like to fill some bags, I don't want to work you too hard. She goes, uh, no, I was thinking more about delivering. I said, well, I have a school. <laughs> she, she picked it up and, and delivered it all. So we are so blessed with wonderful people.
first. So, um, I just have at the at, at the last part piece of this page, and I don't even need to write it down. I said, did I tell you we serve an amazing community? I'm simply in awe every day. Mm -hmm. We just moved here, and it is an amazing community. Yes. Okay. So there's different ways that you can help support your community. Um, first way, you know, you, uh, the, uh, we have our food drives. I was telling you our food distributions, like the one we have at Coliseum. We had it one at the ASU parking lot, but I think we were backing up traffic too much. So I think we're going to stick with the Coliseum from now on. <laughs> but we have the so um, one way you could you know have food drive within your job. You know, turn the office to a competition. You know, um, so you can have a pizza party. Whoever donates the most cans, whichever way y'all work that out, that could work too. Um, so um, one other way community can do it, school versus school, can drive. Um, you could do a bank versus bank. When I worked at uh, the Bank of America, that's what we used to do is the uh, can drives. Um, another way you could do is just collecting canned goods um, at your office party, your birthday party, just any event. Um, I don't know if y'all been in any locations in San Angelo, but uh, we have these yellow, um, I think, I guess you could call them containers, big tub containers. Kind of looks like a trash can, but it's not, so please watch what you put in there. But it's a, it's a yellow container. It's about that big. It has Contra Valley Food Bank on it, and you'll see it around town. So if you ever stop and buy, just feel free, you know, throw a can in there. It's going towards a good cause. Um, last way is the volunteer work. So, um, like we said, we always need volunteers for our distributions and everything like that. But even if you just want to come volunteer at the warehouse or something like that, um, it's not heavy lifting or anything like that. It's a lot of sorting cans. Now, if you want to, you know, want to take on more, you know, we can work something out. But it mainly it's a lot of just, you know, um, sorting cans, um, helping people with their orders, just helping the agencies. Um, and then also um, one way I think a lot of people are, have not been noticing is that we have, um, you can volunteer at one of our pantries, you know, um, the, because I mean, for the most part, we're pretty staffed up at the, at the warehouse, but volunteers are always helpful. But I know the pantries definitely need help with volunteers, you know, because uh, between four and five people serving, our numbers have been, I would say tripling now at this point with, you know, the need of a community right now. So if you, if you want to go volunteer at your pantry, it helps a lot. Let's see. Oh, there you go. <laughs> oh. um, I love this quote. It says, as Loretta King best put it, the greatness of a community is most accurately measured by the compassionate actions of its members. And I just love that because it is about the action. Um, I am the first one that will think a lot about things that I should do. Um, but I try to put feet to it, and uh, San Angelo shines. So we have our big ask right here. Um, the, so this is for our, our Back to Pat program. It's um, been tripling, quadrupling, as you could say, the way it's been going lately. They have the, um, the main thing I want everybody to realize is that it's, almost, it's pretty much like 90% community run. So all of these um, counties in the, the Concho Valley, um, all we've been doing is, I guess you could say, being the middleman in between there. We have the volunteers that pack it, the volunteers that deliver it, volunteers that give it out to the children and everything. So, I mean, if you, so if you're thinking about supporting, that would be a great, that would be a great program to do. It's been taken off. We, me and Claire, um, whenever we walked in today, she told me she was adding another school. So, <laughs> so yeah, it's been, the numbers are increasing, yes. And so, um, so for our Bat Pride program, it takes about $5,225 a week to run. And so um, it runs for 37 uh, weeks, uh, which is, I believe, the whole school year. Um, so for a whole year, it totals to $193,525. But um, each week, we also give out 1,045 bags a week. So, but each bag costs $5. So uh, Claire crunched the numbers a little bit. And um, so, we were, so we would like to ask, you know, for the community, um, everybody to donate $100 a month for the Concho Valley Food Bank to, and towards the Backpack Program. You can, um, you can label your donation directly for the Backpack Program or, you know, you can label it however you want to. Now, there's um, one way, you know, some people don't like to, um, some people don't like to, you know, get up and go to a location. So we do have a way you can go on our website and, and uh, donate online. So, 
And I was wondering, and now we got time for questions. If anybody has any questions right now. <laughs> yes, ma'am. Um, well, at the at the at our office location, we have the a list of the pantries. Um, we, I, I'm trying to think of it, how many exactly we have in San Angelo specifically. In San Angelo, we've got about 85 uh, agencies uh, that have pantries. Mm -hmm. uh, and most of the, a lot of the churches have got pantries that uh, uh, people will be able to access. Uh, so it's uh, it kind of depends everything from uh, the big. Uh, Rush Street Ministries, it would be classified as one of our pantries to a small church that may only be open one Saturday a, a month and give the food out. So it, the pantries vary from size to size. They vary from location to location around town. Uh, when we have people come in and, and are, are in need, we try to locate them next to their closest pantry because they may not have the transportation needs to get uh, from place to place, especially with several sacks of food. So we always try to make sure we've got a good uh, geographic location of where our agencies are. And it, like I said, it could be the soup kitchen, it could be boys and girls club, uh, it could be, you know, like I said, many churches and so forth. So yeah, we've got a, a agencies that are out there uh, on a real strong basis. Yeah, just to piggyback on that, um, actually, this um, yesterday, uh, Sarah updated our pantry list online too. So if you want, if you go on the website, you can see that. Or even if you just stop by, we have a list available. Our list actually has the numbers for our social workers too. So our social workers, they have a, a separate uh, phone line that you can always reach them on too, and it takes you directly to them. It's a cell phone, so you always reach them. <laughs> yeah. And they are second to none. Oh, yes. They are fantastic. Very helpful. <laughs> See any more questions? I taught in kindergarten. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I taught kindergarten, and there was mm -hmm. no discreet cleaning in their backpacks. Mm -hmm. Because they were so proud of their backpacks, they had to pull it out. Yeah. And then, like, for the holidays, like Thanksgiving, they would get two bags with mm -hmm. extra food. So then they would want to share it with their friends, and I'll be like, oh, you're mom. Yes, yes, and yes. If you <laughs> would like to come in at midnight, I will meet you there. <laughs> People will say, we haven't seen you all day. And I said, well, I, I've been packing bags. <laughs> so um, anytime I will accommodate you. I am so thankful for volunteers. Um, anytime we'll make it work. So um, we have we have people come all throughout the day, and some of them. Uh, I just had a, a gal from a clinic, and she popped her head in, and she said, "Claire, my meeting got canceled. Can I just pack bags for an hour? I don't want to have to think." And so she came in during her meeting time, and uh, she helped us so much. So, and we always, you know, we we have some. One of our drivers just had a baby, so we need to replace her. So. The answer is yes, and thank you. Um, do y'all coordinate with the food bank that's on ASU's campus? Is that one of y'all's distribution? It's called uh, Ram Pantry. The Ram Pantry in the, in the multi Multicultural Center? Yes. Yeah. OK, yes. I've been working with getting with them. Um, we're kind of in the final processes of getting set up with them. But yes, hopefully very, very soon. Trying to get it done by their next semester coming up, yes. Is this yes, sir. A two kids backpack program? Is that the largest program you have, or one that has the most um. impact? I would say it's been it's been taken over <laughs> with the impact. Uh, outside of, of hunger relief and uh, working with our individual agencies and so forth, yes, backpack is our is our biggest and strongest program. There are other programs that we are working on. Uh, a couple that will address. Uh, the need for senior nutrition mm -hmm. uh, for folks that uh, are uh, over 65 and need that, uh, that additional nutrition as well. We're working with that. Yeah. We have partnered with uh, San Antonio Food Bank, and so we're rolling in under their auspices with that federal program called CSFP. 
So we are working to do that to address the senior point. <laughs> yes, sir. Can I make a comment? Yes. Uh, just so y'all know how important the food bank is to us at Rust Street, uh -huh. we can get food at Rust Street for 18 cents a pound. Yes. Uh, uh, and recently, because of distribution issues, supply chain, and all, we've had to buy like beef mm -hmm. at retail prices. Oh. So, uh, we, we couldn't do what we do at Rust Street without food money. Right. Thank you, thank you. Let's see, any more questions? Everybody's got their favorite story. <laughs> Share mine. I got you, I got you. I got you. Uh, Many years in this, in this business. But when I first got started in uh, food banking, I went up to Lubbock and to help them open up a kid's cafe, which is an after-school feeding program. And I was serving uh, green beans with spaghetti. And uh, this little boy came through and he stuck his plate up there and I put some green beans on there and he kind of got excited and he walked off and we said, went out into the feeding area and they said, we got extras if somebody wants some more. And here comes little Tommy again, and he comes back up. He's got a little spaghetti, you know, all over his face. And he sticks his plate up there, and we give him some more spaghetti. And he takes off, and man, I look up, and here he comes for a third time. Got a little more spaghetti on him, you know. And I said, Tommy, and I, whatever his name was, I said, man, this is your third time through. You sure like this spaghetti? He said, oh, yes, sir. We don't get this at home. And I said, you don't get spaghetti at home? He says, oh no, sir, we don't get dinner. Now if that doesn't just drop you to your knees, you know, real quick. And uh, people that are involved in that industry, whether you're a school teacher, a healthcare worker, uh, a, an agency representative, those stories are out there. And we think not in San Angelo. We take care of our own in San Angelo. There can't be that many hungry kiddos out here in San Angelo or hungry seniors that need the sustenance that we're able to provide them. They're out here because like I said, the, they said one in every four school children. So if your child goes to school and sits at the lunch table, one of the children that he can reach out and touch represents a child that's suffering from food insecurity. So we're proud of what we're doing. We're excited about what we're doing. And we, uh, we give thanks that uh, the Lord has placed us to where we can do something out there and we can help take care of each other because that's our charge and that's what, that's what we need to be doing. So appreciate y'all. Y'all didn't ask for that, but I just jumped in. I like it, I like it. <laughs> Are there any more questions? Hey, thank you. Hey, before you go, by the way, it's Jacob's birthday today. So, y'all want to sing happy birthday to him? They just go, they just go at it, don't they? <laughs> happy birthday, dear Jacob. Happy birthday to you. There you go, man. Professional singers right there. That was really good. <laughs> Hey, thank you guys so much thank for you. for for coming up. You know, Shelly's been teaching. My wife teaches fourth grade at Lamar, and she's been uh, teaching. She's been telling me a lot of stories throughout these last five years. And so many kids in her, even in her classes, have have just gone through, and they just they they don't they don't get dinner. It's just something that they just live with it. Yeah. So she has some kids in her class that that benefit from this, and I really appreciate what you guys do. Well, thank you all very much for sharing and for uh, everything you do. If y'all have any more questions, you want to talk to them personally, they'll be here for a couple minutes, I'm sure. And uh, uh, But other than that, thank you for coming tonight. We'll close in a word of prayer, and then we will be done. Heavenly Father, we are so thankful that you have given us uh, just organizations like this, Lord, organizations that, that seek to do good, organizations that we can partner with, Lord, as our church uh, seeks to do what you've called us to do, and that is to, to love you and to love others. 
Lord, with everything we are. I pray that you would help their work to, to, uh, to succeed. I pray that uh, the organizations that they work with, such as Rust Street and some of these other pantries, Lord, that, that you would allow them to succeed and that you would not only um, f- fulfill the physical needs of people, but also those physical, um, those, those emotional and relational needs as well. I just pray that you'd open up opportunities, Lord, for people to know that they matter and that they've got a place and that they're cared for. We love you very much, and we are thankful. In Jesus' name, amen. Have a great night, y'all. Thank you.